I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 53 this morning. You can turn with me in your Bibles if you'd like. Chapter 53, beginning with the fourth verse. The subject of uh, what I'm going to share with you this morning is Jesus Christ, our sin bearer. Jesus Christ, our sin bearer. And the prophet Isaiah shares these words with us in this book, if I can get it up to where I can see it. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with sufferings, like one from whom men hide their faces. Hmm. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took upon, uh, upon him our infirmities and carried our sorrows, Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We are like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, and yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked. And with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence. Nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by the knowledge my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils and the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressions, transgressors, for he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. I want to take you back first this morning to a time in the Old Testament in Leviticus where the high priest would once a year offer up a sacrifice for the sins of Israel. You can look it up later in Leviticus chapter 16 and beginning with the 20th verse. There was brought to Aaron once a year, he was the high priest, a, a sacrificial offering and he took off his elaborate ceremonial garments and dressed in white, meaning purity. This was only done once a year. And he put on this garment, which represented to the children of Israel and before God, purity. Which is a sleeve that I cannot get out. <laughs> Where is it? Is there somewhere? I didn't try this on before. The sleeve was caught in the middle. Okay. So the high priest Aaron would put this 
particular robe on just before he sacrificed the two goats that were given to him. And he took the two goats and he sacrificed the first on the altar for the atonement of the sins of Israel. And then he took the second goat and they brought it up to him and he put his hand on the head of this goat. And as he did, he proclaimed the sins of all of Israel that were cast upon this goat. It was not sacrificed, but it was sent out into the wilderness because it was the scapegoat. Symbolically, the sins were placed on the goat, which was taken to the wilderness. And then as we look in Scripture, that I'm going to read to you in just a few moments, Jesus Christ became, for you and I, the scapegoat. And I want you to turn with me now in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. Hebrews 9, 11. And we read this passage. When Christ came as high priest of the good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter the means of the... He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and of calves, but he entered the most holy of holies, the place one will bring the sacrificial lamb, the blood of redemption, the blood of goats and bulls and of ashes of the heifer, sprinkle on these who are ceremonially, ceremoniously unclean. Sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, Cleanse our conscience from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. For this reason, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, a new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now that he has died as a reason by to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. In other words, Jesus came as our Savior. He came as the scapegoat. This is the very beginning of God who gave the law. Jesus Christ, the sin bearer, was sim symbolized by the goat. Remember the words of John the Baptist in John chapter 1, verse 29. He says, Behold the Lamb of God who bears and takes away the sin of the world. Here is the fulfillment of all the prophecies of the one who would come as the sin bearer. People, if there is no sin bearer, there is no salvation. If there is no sin bearer, we cannot or we must stand before Almighty God and give an account of all of our sin. If there is no sin bearer, we must bear the weight of the judgment of God against all iniquity, unbelief, and rebellion, and evil in our lives. In a little bit, we're going to share together at the communion table the Lord's Supper. It is important that we, as we gather around the Lord's table, that we understand why we do it. 
For if it, there is no sin bearer, there is no salvation. The sin bearer is at the very heart, the very heart of Christianity. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, John chapter 10. So what does he do? He lays down his life for his sheep. This was voluntary, voluntary on the part of Christ. God reconciled us, and he reconciled the justice of God and the mercy of God so that the justice of God has been satisfied in the death of his son. Jesus became our substitute. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 are these words. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Right? Jesus Christ, the righteous one, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen? For the whole world he came to die and to give his life. Jesus is the sin bearer for all sin. His death was totally sufficient. At the Lord's death, we know that the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. And we know that opened the way for us to go into the very holy of holies. And in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24, these words, these are so special. For Christ did not enter a man, enter a man-made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. So what happened when that veil was rent? Jesus entered the most what? Holy of holies. Because he was the lamb that paid the price that the Father sent for all mankind. And his love for us is sufficient. As the Lord came, he gave us this promise that anyone, all mankind that comes to him and confesses their sin before him, that he will freely forgive them of all their sin. Aren't you glad? It was, it was a free gift that Jesus came down and took the place of the goat that we represents that scapegoat that went into the, the wilderness for the sins of all of Israel. But Jesus came not only to die for the sins of Israel, but he died for all mankind, that all mankind might know him, might receive him into her, through their hearts, might have that relationship with him. He was the living proof that God's great transaction to save mankind has been fully completed, making it possible for all men everywhere to be saved, to be forgiven by God. We're going to sing in just a few moments a song that, that I don't often put down for singing and in decision time, and Bob's going to come up and help us with the song and leading it with you. And um, it's found on page number 596. And it's a, it's a song that says, I surrender all. And you know, when we come to Jesus, that's what we're doing. Amen? We're surrendering all to him. The words of that song are tremendous. Listen to the words that we sing on the first and second verse. You can receive him into your heart this morning because Jesus came as the sin bearer. He came to seek and to save those that were lost. And all we have to do, and his arms are still outstretched to us this morning, all we have to do is come to him and receive him into our hearts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for coming and giving your life for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you freely came and you gave your life for us so that we might have eternal life. And Lord Jesus, I don't know who's here this morning, but I pray if there are those here this morning that have not received you into their hearts, have not accepted you as their Savior, I pray that they will come this morning. They will come to know you as Savior and Lord. And I pray this in your precious name. Amen.